Right! These are my least favourite videos in the world, eh? Garlic bread. <laughs> is there any garlic bread in it? <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to another video. If you're new, my name is Niall Wilson. I'm here with the beast, the legend, the champion, the world's strongest man, Eddie Hall, soon to be history making boxer. Oh my god, I want to come with those pills in a minute. His wonderful wife, Alex, has made us a meal, and I'm going to sit here and chat to you, Ed, and try and eat and get my way through this. This is lunch, right? This is lunch, the first lunch. And I'm only going to be eating lunch today. Um, I'm sure a lot of you will be disappointed that I'm not trying to eat his full day of eating, but what is on this plate that I'm about to reveal is probably more than my daily calorie intake, not genuinely. Probably. Ready for the reveal. Oh, she's gone easy on you. He's she's, joking, mate. She's giving you the smaller chicken mix and a bit less rice. I mean, I've eaten, I've been sitting here eating this for 10 minutes. Can I ask one question? You have no sauce? No. Can I have sauce, please? Yeah, of course you can. Can I have some tomato ketchup, please? Fucking <laughs> 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 Yorkshire people. Ketchup on everything. <laughs> or well, gravy. Gravy is the one. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, so the rice, just so you know, is cooked in chicken stock. Right, so not, so not water. So it gives it more flavour, it gives it more calories, nutrients, all like the bone broth and everything. Really good for you. Amazing. Can you tell me what it is as I'm squirting ketchup all over it? Yeah, yeah. So how many, how many grams of rice? Oh, at least 300. 300? That's like, what, three bags? To how much are Uncle Ben's bags? No, 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 two. This does look amazing. I like two chicken it. legs. Tandoori chicken. Is that right, Al? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. That's wonderful. So Eddie Hall, right now your regime is very different to what it was in 2017. Similar, but very different. Which if you go on his channel, which you absolutely will be subscribed to, you'll already know how much food he puts on his world's strongest man diet. What's your day food wise like now, right now, preparing for the boxing fight? Um, so first thing in the morning, protein shake. Do you track it all, yeah? No, I'll just no. do it by you. First thing in the morning, protein shake. Um, I'll do a, do a mile and a half run, I'll then come back up, I'll have 200 grams of smoked salmon, three scrambled eggs, piece of sourdough bread, bowl of rice krispies, and then I'll come down, I'll do probably about a two, two and a half hour weight workout. During that workout, I'll have a couple of litres of cranberry juice, another protein shake, banana, and uh, maybe a bag of beef jerky. And then 12 o'clock is lunch, and this is usually chicken and rice and veg. I'll then go to bed, Sleep this off for an hour and a half. Get up, have a second second lunch, which is another break, another protein shake, a couple of oat bars, banana. After boxing, do an hour, an hour and a half boxing. Straight after the boxing, another protein shake, another oat bar, another banana. And then I'm home, physio, for an hour, another protein shake. And then I'll go into the spa, do hot cold treatment, stretch off, sauna, ice bath, all that for probably another hour. Straight in, and then wifey has got the tea ready. And that's usually chicken and rice and veg. And then, if I get hungry after that... If you what? get hungry after that? Which he does. Which I do. It's usually... I always try and be good and have a protein shake, but sometimes I've like the my protein sort of, you know, brownies or oat bars or something. Something that's like a bit cleaner than, you know, like a normal brownie, so to say. And then that's it. I sometimes take a protein shake to bed with me. So, I'm having... I mean, at the minute, I've That's about seven protein shakes. Yeah, yeah, about six, seven protein shakes a day. I mean, at the minute, probably six, seven thousand calories most days. Right. And that's nothing, yeah, compared to strongman days I was doing 12,000 upwards. So ne nearly double. You lost some weight then now, yeah? Yeah, my peak was 196 kilo, 430 pounds, I'm now 160-ish, so about 360 pounds. I've lost 36 kilo in total. It's nearly how much I weigh. <laughs> it is, yeah. Man, that is insane, like, I don't I'm personally one that struggles to eat. So Even eat three meals. Does it take a lot of practice to do that? Like, that's exactly what I was about to say. It's training. You've got to train your stomach, you've got to train your body to dunk all that like, like this. is a huge meal. I mean, it's a good kilo of food, you know, two, two and a half pounds of food here. Yeah. I'll eat this and then I'll go to sleep and then the body's sort of digesting it. It's working hard to digest that whilst my body's recovering. It's all about training your body. From the day I started, it took me 17 years to sort of get used to force eating. You know, when I was a strong man, I'd, I'd have a meal like this and then I'd have a litre of ice cream afterwards. Just to, just to top up the calories. I wouldn't be hungry, but I'd force it down me. You, you just get used to it. Yeah. In my profession, the last thing you wanted before gymnastics is a big meal. Mm. Because it's like sat there on your stomach. Yeah. So imagine going upside down and flipping and... Yeah, yeah, fuck that. I think we quite get good at eating sort of bare minimum to maintain. So you, so you eat just to maintain energy levels, but all the... Yeah, I just want to stay at a, same, a similar weight so that every day I'm the same weight when I go in, so it's just consistent. Yeah. And then I, I never counted, I tracked. I just 
you know your body, don't you? Yeah, yeah. You learn, so. See, I was the opposite strong man. I couldn't train unless I was absolutely stuffed because I trained for four hours. I trained weights for four hours. So you get so, hungry after. So I have to be. Yeah, I have to stuff my face, and then halfway through the training session, 200 gram of steak or ham. Uh, with beef jerky and wash that down with protein shakes, so that's halfway through the session. Does your body, can your body digest that amount of protein? Um, Are you used to it? A big question mark on that one, but at the end of the day, I was the biggest, strongest, most powerful man on the planet. It's a conjunction of all those things I did, put, to put into one pot that it worked. Yeah. yeah. So I did something right. Definitely. What's your favourite recovery method like? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sleep and food are number one, yeah. Sleep's number one. Number two, Obviously diet, but cancel them out. Sleep's number one? Yeah, sleep's number one, definitely. That's interesting. Cancel them out. I think the hot and cold treatment is the best thing you can do for recovery for any sport. Scientifically or personally, you, you feel the benefits? I personally feel the benefits. I don't give a fuck what, what science says. Mm. End of the day, I've never had a coach up until now. I've never had a nutritionist up until now. It's all been trial and error. Yeah. I've always done it how I feel. In the hot and cold, you just feel like you do an hour hot and cold treatment. You get out of that cold bath and you come into the house and warm up, you just feel like a million bucks. You know, it's you can't be that feeling you sleep better because you've done the hot and cold. It's just that vicious, like that circle of, of, of doing everything right, it all helps each other. And then I'd say physio, people neglect physio massively. I went an hour, an hour to an hour and a half physio every single day, seven days a week. I was dressed as a strong man, I was working full time, I was spending 300 quid a week on physio. You know, a good chunk of my wage on physio, and everyone's like, what are you doing? Like, wasting all your money on that's investment. It's money I'll get back in the long run. And I was completely right. You know, it's investment into my career, it paid off. It's all about how you feel, isn't it? So even if whatever scientifically it says on the tin, what, what a recovery method is doing, or a, or a food, or whatever, if you believe it's going to work, and you like the way you feel, then it's all about you, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, like even, even placebo is a big thing. 100%. You know, if someone says, take this tablet, and you're going to be 10% stronger, you start taking it, <coughs> you believe it. You're gonna be ten percent stronger. Yeah. And if you're not, then that's that's your own mind, isn't it? It's the power of the mind, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. If you believe the doctor that the tablet is going It's been proven. You know, they've done tests on people where they give people an actual product and give them a placebo. And nine times out of ten the placebo is uh, just as good. Yeah. What's your why Ed? Like why that military regime that I've witnessed a lot of it today. Mm. You're about to go for a nap. Like I can't, I can't, I can't go and burn the scheduled nap. Like what if you're not tired? Or are you always tired? Tough shit. Doesn't matter if I'm not tired, I still have to go and lie down for an hour and a half. You know, even if I'm not tired. Sometimes you don't fall asleep. Yeah, sometimes you don't. It's just just go and rest the body for an hour and a half. Just let everything sort of, you know, digest your food, let your muscles relax, replenish your glycogen stores ready for me next session. You know, I train three times a day, so I've got to be on, on, on point with these things. So what but so the military thing, like the, the reason you do all this, which I'd vouch and say like very very little people doing what you're doing on this planet. Mm -hmm. Why do you do it? Do it because I want to be the best. You know, you can do something half arsed I could I could get up, laze about all day and just do boxing, be a good boxer. Or I could get up early, go for a run, eat right, do my weights, and then that makes you a, a, a great boxer. You know, you're strong, you're powerful, you're fit. Amateur boxers, most of my full-time jobs, you know, they'll just do boxing in the night. Imagine if they didn't have that job and they're able to train and recover all day. That's the difference. I've got that privilege. And this is one of my worst sort of pet hates. People that have got talent, got opportunities, and they piss them up the window, you know? So I grab them with both hands and I, I, I live life to the full. End of the day, you know, it, it gets me places, you know? It, it's, I mean look around, it, it, it's got me somewhere, you know, it, it, I've made a success out of this, I've made a, made a career. You know, not many people can genuinely say they love the job, and I do love my job. I get to hang around with, with, with one of my best mates all day, I train all day, in my house, and I come home and let beautiful wife and kids at home, you know, I can't spend anything better than that, and I'm doing what I love. It's all that circle, all connected. There's not one reason, there's many reasons. Yeah, when you said you want to be the best, Mm. Everyone, I think a lot of us have got that in us. I wanted to be and I still want to be the best. But what do you, do? you love the journey of it and you focus on that. Or is it the medal, is it the, the title, is it the knockout, is it the, the, the item, the house, the money? For me, I, loved, I fell in love with the journey and the process which then the things started to come. Or do you focus on the things? It's, it changes. A bit you know, with a strong man, at first I loved the journey. I absolutely adored it, you know, it was being my passion. Yeah. But then when I became full-time strongman, I quit the job and sold the door business. That's when it became military. And strongman's a very soul sport, a lonely sport. You have to get up and do things yourself and go to training on your own. Um, there's no money in it. 
so to say. So that was hard, you know, I found that very hard. Towards the end, in that last year of competing, I hated Scrambler. Genuinely, I didn't, I didn't like it. It was, but I set that goal to become the world's strongest man and I got that goal saying, back up your ball. You know, once I've set a goal, that's it, my mind's on it. Up until 2017, I, I enjoyed the journey, but that last year just got so stressful, so military. You know, I, I barely saw the wife for more than an hour a week and that's not, that's not been like, that's not lying. An hour a week or something life and kids. And that's when it becomes unenjoyable. You know, it becomes that obsessive that you, you, you're willing to ruin your family life over it and that wasn't fun. Mm -hmm. Was it worth it? It was worth it. I can safely sit here now and say it was worth it, but by God was it tough. The thing is, man, I could have put all that effort in, all that sacrifice, you know, at, well, not just me, Wife, kids, mum, dad, brothers, the lot. And then what if I came second? Nobody cares about second place. And that's the harsh reality of every sport, really. I'm sorry to say, it, it is. People only remember winners. And unless you're winning the world's strongest man, you might as well not be there. And that, that was my sort of thought of it. Yeah, I'm struggling there. You'd be impressed with this. All my family will be watching me all the time. <laughs> so yeah, today's session is not a bit of a You're generally going to be fucking sore tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think, right, Eddie Hall will ever be not the beast? Like, let's say, what, you're th 360 pounds. It's fucking massive, mate. Do you ever think that'll be 250? I think... Because <laughs> <laughs> like, that's 100, question, 100 pounds you know? a lot of weight. It's a good question, you know, let's like, say I get into my 60s, 70s. You know, I'm a granddad, great granddad. <laughs> my luck and like... You could be doing this at fucking 60. The Beast is a brand, and I've, I've built it up really well. End of the day, it's given me a career. You know, the Beast The beast brand get, has given me what's around me now. Not so much what I achieved, but the way I did it. You know what, I enjoy it. You know, people say, oh, it's tacky, you've got Beast on your truck, you've got Beast on this, Beast on that. And end of the day, it's like, well, I'm loving life. I'm enjoying myself, I'm having fun, I'm, I'm doing what I love. You know, anyone that criticizes that, take a look at yourself, really. Did you do gymnastics again? I'd love to do the match actually. You had fun that day, yeah. It was a good laugh, mate. Yeah. Real good laugh. What, you, what did you think of his back flip? Of his back flip? Let's be fair. <laughs> I was actually impressed, but you can't stop looking at the outfit, can you? <laughs> Mate, that's the reason it went viral, 100% that outfit. <laughs> <laughs> it was genius, genius. You've got to have no shame in this game, I guess. Mm. <laughs> YouTube's a different world to World's Strongest Man, isn't it? It is. All right, so what's your, what do you think your journey will be with your, like content on YouTube? Where do you want to take it? Is there any, like, because for me, like, I feel like we're very similar in our sports. We're quite, like, we're almost pioneers in a way mm -hmm. that's taking it to new heights. Do you have, like, goals and aspirations to, for World's Strongest Man to be more mainstream, to be big? Obviously, it is. I mean, it will be, it's more than gymnastics is. I mean, 100%, it's, uh, Strongman's come on leaps and bounds, especially this last, you know, sort of three, four years. Um, I, I play a big role in that, you know, I, I present for Channel 5 in the UK, I present for CBS in America, for channel, you know, for presenting World's Strongest Man and I enjoy it. And uh, run official strongman, which is like a qualification process uh, to World's Strongest Man, it gives athletes a chance to sort of show off and qualify and get places. So I'm definitely giving back to the sport and as I get older and as I quieten down and you know, start to retire more and more, I will put more effort into the strongman. That, that's my passion, you know, I want it. I want to grow the sport. I really do. Yeah, do you reckon we could get Arnold Schwarzenegger to do a backflip? <laughs> doubt it. Why? I doubt it. He's too old, man. Really? Yeah. I don't think he is. You were, you were too heavy. You did it. I mean, Arnold. He's, what is he? 70, I think he's 74 this year. No, I'm really. He might be too old, yeah. You've got to take that into the equation. Look at the cat stealing the show. I've, I've got. I, I apologise. It's like a thing, they have to get in on all our videos. That is the strangest looking thing I've ever seen. It's like a rat. She's poor, she's too skinny. Favourite food? Mmm, wife cooking. All of it. Anything, yeah, all of it. Yeah, I mean, this is beautiful, by the way. I'm sorry I'm not eating it all. Honestly, don't. I've got a little belly. <laughs> I don't think, you know, like YouTube, there's a massive market for eating challenges. Mmm. I mean, you, like, most of your viral videos are probably along those lines. Hey, man, I've done my own TV show doing eating challenges. Bro, I hate it. I can't do it. <laughs> it's horrible. There's nothing worse. Honestly, of all the things I've done in my career, probably one of the hardest things was that TV show. Eddie Eats America. People, people don't realise I had to film 12 episodes in 21 days. So every other day. So it was like, no, 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 no. So, no it was like, do a challenge, wake up, travel, another challenge. Wake up, travel, whole day travelling, wake up, another challenge. Would you like, not eat all day till the challenge? You have, yeah, you couldn't. So I had like a tiny bowl of breakfast, uh, porridge for breakfast and a starble there, I had like an orange from the lunch. That was hard. You know, and then I had to present, I had to like, 
introduce the restaurant, introduce the challenge, and, and I had no energy. It was hard. Like, I'd run myself into the ground doing that. Really How tough. many calories are you pumping down in one eating challenge? Like? Oh, some of them were like 10,000 in one go. They were nuts. Absolutely crazy. I mean, I'll do things like this, but the, the sheer fact that I can't finish two chicken legs and 300 grams of rice shows that I can definitely not do a 10,000 calorie challenge on YouTube. I'm sorry. It's painful. I mean, you've got to appreciate the size of these plates. These aren't normal plates. Oh, yeah, fuck. And look at the size of my hand. <laughs> yeah. These are plat this is these are actually platters. <laughs> they are, yeah. They're not plates of platters. That's so cool. You must have a favourite food, like mine steak and chips. Like were you to go to me, like would you have a cheat day? You should go to ice cream. Um honestly probably pizza. Pizza. I bet you have like two large pizzas, don't you? I can eat a lot. Yeah. P pizza and then cheesecake, steak and chips. No, it's not. Oh, what is it? You love you love a Sunday dinner. That's just a thing, I love loads of things. You find, you find... Yeah, but if you were to pick one, I think mean, that's why I know him better than you know some stuff. You've got a Sunday dinner, you like the heaters, you like curry and you like pizza. Yeah, it's hard to show it like they're all equal. What's your favourite muscle group to train? Um, probably like doing back. Deadlift? Yeah, deadlift, upper back, like that, like, yeah. Anything like that. It's just so, I've always been so, so strong in my back for some reason. Just, I like, just build differently in the back. And I can move weights that no one can. And I enjoy that. Yeah. I enjoy that. Bye, right, brother. Thanks for your time. Thanks for like me borrowing you while you sat eating your massive lunch. Thanks for you know, thanks for having me around today. It's been an absolute pleasure. God, before we go, what, what are these concoctions here? I don't so, know if you can see them on the table. Like, can the three times a day, I have all my tablets. So I have like ZNAs, digestive enzymes, vitamin D, vitamin C, uh, cod liver oil, omega um, three, omega six, vitamin K, multivits, um, selenium. All the B vitamins, niacin, and CBD. CBD capsules. Not much, sir. No, no, no. I have that three <laughs> times a day. You have all that stuff three times a day? Three times a day. Health is a big thing, you know, people, I don't give a shit what anyone says, right? You cannot get enough protein, carbs, and fats from just diet. Not what I do. You need to, you know, you've got to supplement it. And that's, that's the key word there supplement it's a supplement to food i use them to the max you know and stuff like that and a selenium you know i wouldn't even have a clue what food to eat to get selenium but it's a necessity for the immune system and like where do you get it from well fine then get a tablet you know multi-bit omega-3 I'm, I'm massively deficient in omega-3s and um, fish oils you know i can't absorb them so i have to really overdose them so it's just like a concoction of things vitamin k is great for releasing uh, b vitamins Digestive enzymes are obviously good for digesting your food. The ZMAs, uh, because I sweat a lot, I have to keep it with my magnesium and zinc levels high all the time. So it's just a, a never ending battle of keeping your body topped up and, and people neglect that, you know, massively. And I don't, I, I put it at the front of the queue all the time. But again, that's part of the military precision. Yeah. Mate, you're an inspiration to everyone. Make sure you go subscribe to Ed. Please subscribe to me as well. Thank you. Big love the beast. Take care, guys.